Hi, ho ho blah and you. Ho ho blah. This is my guys. Fauci good video. On this channel, I'm regularly asked how I learned Gaelic. Although admittedly, I'm more often asked why, but that's a different story. So first things first, I would like to apologise to anybody if I gave you the impression that I am a fluent Gaelic speaker, because I'm not. I'm just a learner, but I have been at it for a number of years, and I still have a long, long way to go yet. However, I have been learning through multiple routes. Uh, I've tried multiple resources, so I thought it'd be quite good to have a quick kind of breakdown and go through some of those and uh, how I found them and their maybe positives and negatives. But at the end of the day, it depends on the individual, I think. Some people learn in different ways. Um, so some of the ways that I did it didn't really work for me, might work for you. Other ways did work for me, might not work for you, and so on. So first off, if you have the time, the money, and the sheer drive and willpower, you might like to take a course at Solmorostig, which is the University of Highlands and Islands. That's their Isle of Skye campus. They do short courses and they do full degrees. The short course I did with them was distance learning, which at the time was done over the phone. I mean, literally, it was on a landline. They recommend using a landline because the connection to the Highlands was prone to dropping. And this, this didn't really work all that well for me. Uh, I like to hear sounds clearly and also like to see the movement of somebody's mouth when they're speaking something, especially if they're making unusual sounds, you know. So when you've got someone saying something like, Roll, like that. I kind of want to see what they're doing to be able to pick up on the nuances of the sounds and you can't really do that over the phone. Not to mention the state of the phone bill afterwards. Now this was a number of years ago now so perhaps things have changed especially with the improvement of technology so perhaps it is actually now done through mobiles or maybe it's done online entirely. I, I, I don't know. You would need to check that out if that was kind of the route you wanted to go down. However, they also do immersive courses, and that's something I would really like to do. Where essentially, you have a fortnight of just speaking Gaelic, essentially, and what better way to improve your fluency than essentially being put in a position that you're kind of forced to speak it? You don't really have a choice. You know, if you can't order your food in Gaelic, then you're probably not going to get fit. Well, I don't know, that's, I'm being slightly hyperbolic there. Um, I don't actually know because I've not done it, but I could imagine that being the case. They're there to encourage you to speak it as much as is possible. So you do need to have a basic understanding, a basic conversational level first, I would say. The downside to that is not only do you have to pay for the course, but you have to pay for your own accommodation, which considering the short courses tend to run in sort of peak tourist season, yeah, paying for a bed and breakfast on the Isle of Skye, or nearby anyway, uh, at that point for two weeks, that's going to take a lot out of your uh, out of your savings there. So if you were to do that, maybe recommend a tent. I don't know, something to look into. But anyway, that's that's the first kind of thing I want to look at. This next one really only applies to people who live in Scotland, uh, apologies to people who don't, but every local authority or council legally should have a Gaelic development officer. Now that is a person who deals with all the Gaelic within that local authority. So whether it be Perth and Kinross or uh, Highland Council or Argyll and Butte or whatever it happens to be, there, there should legally be someone who works for the local authority who you can contact and ask, where do I go for lessons? How do I learn? How do I get involved? And it could be that they run courses themselves. They maybe get tutors in and they do it online, especially sort of during lockdown and everything. Or perhaps it's actually face to face. And again, they get tutors in, they might do it themselves. I don't know, it just depends on that on that person's skill set and availability. But it's always worthwhile getting in touch with them because 
if they might just say look we, we don't have anything running at the moment but i'll take your details and that's what they should be doing they should be taking your details and then so if they say they need six people to run a course for example a beginner's course is they might only have four people and then you add your name to that and then another person applies somebody you know perhaps then there you go that's you've got your six you can get get cracking with that or maybe you're that sixth person that they need to get that course started or maybe there are just tutors around that are doing one-to-one -one lessons I don't know it just would just depend on on the circumstances within that local authority but they should build the signpost you in the right direction that's the main thing so for Scottish learners that is one thing I absolutely recommend you to do now another place that does classes online is eSchool e school essentially and they actually do proper accreditations as well so you can actually come away with a qualification um, so in Scotland you can come away with national fives or there were standard grades when I was at school there were O grades before that there are now a couple national fives so that is you know uh, a course aimed at 14 15 16 year olds but you still learn all the things that are necessary just like you would do a French exam when you were about 16 in high school same kind of thing you can have Gaelic at that level as well you can do Nat 5 you can do higher and advance higher through eSchool and it's all done online it's all done they email you the resources they do the classes online it's all sort of done you know it's not zoom but it's that kind of idea so if that is more suited to you then that's another option now for people who are just generally wanting to learn a bit about the language just some phrases or you know they're not really interested in getting to proper fluency within a short space of time then there's lots of different things you can use one that i would recommend is duolingo last year the app they introduced scottish gaelic and it went daft it went daft it was i don't know within the first month something like that hundred thousand people downloaded it and, and were learning it which is crazy it's people from all over the world and so that was that was good to see i did the first level of it but i was doing other things on top of that so i didn't really need to keep doing it and it, it for me it, it didn't really work but i think it'd be really good because it's so repetitive that's kind of the thing you want to do when you're learning a language anyway especially right at the beginning you just want to repeat things over and over and over again obviously there are variations within that so you're not just literally saying the same thing over and over again but it's the same kind of sentences and it slowly slowly builds up some of the audio files aren't great that was one thing that would be my one criticism of it was that yeah sometimes the recordings weren't all that good especially if you're on a mobile device it's quite difficult with the, the tinny speakers of a mobile device so i tended to use it on my desktop computer where we've got big speakers so i could hear things a bit more clearly so i think for learners sometimes that might be a little bit tricky uh, but it is fun it's it's just about it's just you know it's just learning through doing games and, and all that kind of thing you do get a lot of emails from them if you miss a day though that's the only thing uh, <laughs> i suppose it's a good thing because they're trying to you know get you to keep using the app and that's the, really the only way you're gonna learn is if you just keep doing it but it did get to be quite annoying at times so i did the whole of the first level and then i went ah, I'll, I'll take a day off or something like that and then i never went back to it despite them emailing me pretty much every day saying oh you've missed you've missed your you know your whatever it was but you can do it little and often and that's that's kind of the point it's, it's such an easy resource to use you know you just take five minutes you know go outside especially in this weather it's, it's absolutely roasting of course at the moment but yeah you can just sort of sit wherever and, 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 and do it you know you can do it before you go to bed you know just five minutes here and there that's probably the best thing to use I would say. If you prefer something a little bit more interactive, then there are lots of little courses and games and things on the website learngalic.net. Uh, loads of resources on that website and they link to loads of other ones as well. So, you know, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a rabbit hole that one. It's a really good resource though, because not only are there games, there are loads of sound files for a show that was done for BBC Radio and Gale. They've got transcripts of all these letters that were written specifically for learners, you know, so there was, it was, and it's kind of a, it's almost like a story runs through them all. It's, it's kind of a big collection of, 
of letters that run together so you can listen to them you can read them it's also got a great uh, Gaelic dictionary with sound files and there's an app for that as well specifically for the dictionary which I use all the time and they also host every episode of speaking our language which for those of you who are old like me you may remember from Kunsol Tele back in the early 90s it was a show it was half an hour episodes and it was shown at, I don't know, six o'clock kind of thing. That was before BBC Alipa was a, was a thing. So it was on console telly, it was on your analogue TV, BBC One or Two, I think it was, uh, just after whatever Neighbours or <laughs> whatever it was. And then they'd show this speaking our language, which, as I say, it was made in the 90s, so a little bit dated now, visually, anyway. You know, shell suit score. <laughs> but again, yeah, it's dated, but it's still a worthwhile resource. Just again for just listening and repeating things and everyday sort of phrases. Although some of them, yeah, some of them are a little bit dated. You know, they're talking about things that aren't really, you know, aren't really a thing anymore. But you get the general idea, and it's always just good to listen to more. So finally, if you want to learn Gaelic and you've got kids. There are loads of resources out there that cater to that. I would highly, highly recommend gallicforparents.com. So you can listen to storybooks and you can listen to songs. So that means that you could actually sit and learn them yourself and then you could do it to your kids. That's kind of the idea is that you learn it yourself and then you do it with your kids. But you don't have to because the audio files are there. and. You can, if you're in Scotland anyway, you can order the books that they actually use. You know, the, the audio files are there of these specific books. So you can order the books, you can get them in English and in Gaelic. Most of the books are pretty good. Some of them, you know, the translations aren't great, but you know, you just you just do what you can. Um, but yeah, there's songs on there, and if you if you are from Scotland, you can order those books. Uh, they're the same books that are used for Bookbug. So again, that's something to speak to your uh, local Gaelic development officer about if you want. Agus Shinagade, and there you have it. That's kind of my whistle stop tour through just some of the resources that are out there, some of my favorites, the ones that I usually recommend to people when I'm asked. And I'm, there's stuff out there that will help you with your with your Gaelic learning journey if that's what you're wanting to do and it's quite useful just to pick and choose bits out of all these different ones you don't have to go I'm going to specifically do this one I've found that's not actually very useful uh, so but if you have any suggestions or any questions regarding any of these resources I'll try my best to answer down in the comments so feel free to leave a comment down below I'll hopefully have more Gaelic content on the way I realize I've done some other bits and pieces uh, since my last video on Gaelic but to make sure you don't miss out on that, make sure you subscribe, make sure you click the bell icon, all that kind of stuff. The usual YouTube shenanigans. So, tap live, I guess, cheerio and